Hello, welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the difference between syntax errors and exceptions utilizing a Django example, and then go ahead and integrate Sentry with Django, a Django project, to then automatically report errors and exceptions. To avoid any confusion here, this is a very basic tutorial. Uh, we will be utilizing the documentation from Sentry and Django, and I'll cover that and point you towards that. And of course, you can go ahead and just read that and follow through and integrate your application with Sentry. Of course, you can do that. And I just wanted to give you some additional commentary. And this tutorial also serves as the first tutorial in in this theme. I haven't created yet a tutorial based around exception reporting and so on. So this is the first tutorial. So it's, it makes a good start for us to understand the basics of how to connect Django and start to report errors and exceptions using third party applications or services. It's worth saying at this point, actually, it's quite a big deal to make sure that you have a robust way of recording errors and exceptions in your application, particularly when it's been deployed in production. But it also, this type of service also comes in handy when you are also developing. And although Sentry here I'm suggesting is a, a service that essentially captures reports and, uh, and reports on errors and exceptions, it does a whole host of other, um, it pr provides a whole host of other services other than that. And here we're just going to be focused on the very basics. So let's just formalize a syntax error. Syntax error is an error in your source code of your program. Of course, all programs, uh, our programming languages, must follow some sort of strict syntax to compile or parse uh, correctly. And of course, if any aspect of that code does not conform to the syntax of the programming language, we will produce a syntax error. So normally here in Python Django, we would have an arrow indicating in the command prompt where the parser ran into the syntax error. So let's just uh, simulate this for example. Here we have a simple Django application. Um, the application is called core. This is where the settings is. I've created a new app for no particular reason. I've connected that up in the settings. Uh, so let's go into the core URLs here. Uh, let's go ahead and for example, let's just create a new path and then let's just add a function to that. Okay, and let's just remove this comma here. So this is a, a bad example, but so let's go ahead and run this project. And you can see here we have a syntax error. So like I suggested in the slide there, we have a little arrow here indicating where the syntax error is. So potentially the, the line before here, um, we're going to need a comma there. So if we add the comma, another error should occur. So now I'm getting a name error. So you can see here in the terminal, it's helping us debug the application as we go along if we're running the program. So let's go ahead and just add a new function. Now I realize that I'm doing this wrong. So this is just to, to show um, how this is helpful. So now we have another syntax error here. Um, of course, we've not defined the, the function correctly. So we give that a go and it must be a callable or list or tuple uh, in case of the in case of include. So this is just a demonstration, but you can see here that we have in the terminal some syntax errors. So let's assume that our program now compiles. We have eradicated all of our syntax errors. So an exception can be considered an error detected during the code execution. So as the program is running, so let's go back in our code to see if we can kind of simulate this. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's pass in the request. And then let's do a simple kind of division equals uh, one divided by zero. So this should cause an, an exception. So let's go ahead now and run this. So we're looking for this path. So let's just call this, for example, test. Right, so let's just uh, remove that and let's uh, run our server again. So if I go over to the actual URL, so here my server's on, go to test, and you can see here that we get an error. So as per normal, we can see in the terminal here, we receive some information about it and that can help us then determine how to solve the problem. 
Of course, that isn't always going to be the case. Once you start to deploy your application, you'll want to still be able to track and monitor any errors in the application that might occur. So here comes in Sentry. So this is one of many packages or applications or services that you can utilize to hook your application to, to help you track any or and report back on any errors. And this can be utilized while developing and also once you've kind of deployed your application. So Sentry, like I maybe alluded to, is a, a very big service or there's lots of different services that it provides as well as just reporting back on errors here in this type of environment. But of course, we're just gonna focus on this simple setup begin with and now go ahead, go to the Sentry homepage, sign up and now hook our application up to Sentry so that we can start reporting on errors. So go ahead and go over to the Sentry.io website. From here, you're able to then sign up so you can get started there's a few different packages available uh, so for example here we can definitely utilize this for free and there's resources for each if you go over to pricing you can see that we can use it in a limited way uh, for development this is fairly handy now if you have absolutely no reason to utilize something like this but you are maybe new to development development and you are thinking about going into development just exploring packages like this it leads into many different questions and it gives you some better insights into how to potentially manage applications it leads you into different technologies terminologies so there's a whole hope there's a whole hope there's a whole heap of things you can learn from just checking out different packages um, if you've got a spare half an hour to to do so so you can see here we can utilize it for free um, and that's going to give us quite a lot potentially. So developer here, we've got 30 day data retention. Uh, we've got, we can capture up to 5K errors, 10K transition, transactions and one gig attachments. Uh, so uh, we're going to be utilizing the STK. You can see the workflow here. We can utilize a Sentry in many different ways, um, but here we're limited to the SDKs. Uh, so visibility performance, and this gives you a good overview of the type of services that you may, once you move into a, a new job, you may be part of or involved in or, or need to learn these type of aspects. Uh, so again, it's a good reason to kind of explore some of these packages. Right. So with that said, go ahead and get started, sign up create a new account and I'll see you on the inside. So what's going to happen once you create a new account, you're going to receive a few emails accept then, uh, log in, and then you're normally presented with like a, a page which makes you kind of, or forces you to start to build a project. And you can get around that by just closing that and logging in once you've agreed in the email or just verified your email. So eventually, once you've logged in, you'll be presented with the control panel here, the admin panel. So from here, all we need to do is go over to projects, and then create a new project. Very simple. You can, see, you can see that this is supported on a whole heap of different technologies. And here we're going to be utilizing Django. So let's just go ahead and select Django. So we then have to define when we want to be alerted. So alert me on every new issue. So let's just go with that to begin with. Now that isn't always going to be beneficial or isn't going to be uh, something that you might want to set up for deployment or production uh, but for now let's just set up so it alerts on every uh, every new issue um, let's go ahead now and give it a project name so Django test one and then we're going to sign a team so let's go ahead and now create this project now straight away we're given all the information we need to simply add this to our Django project so let's go ahead and just pip install so this is really simple. I think I've already done it on this. So let's go ahead and just run that. So next up, we're given some information here about how to actually configure the SDK to initialize it with Django or to integrate it with Django. So you can hear, see here, we need to add this to our settings file. So let's go ahead and do that. So at the bottom here, let's just uh, get rid of that. Let's get rid of uh, that. So down here, let's put it at the bottom here. So not too much to say here at this point. Um, 
let's just go through the default. Maybe in the latest tutorial, we can start to kind of focus on these different uh, settings if that's something that you're interested in. So with that set, um, all we need to do now is configure some sort of error. So let's go into, for example, the URLs here. We've already done it in actual fact. So this will allow us to simulate an error. So let's go ahead and now just turn on the server. So here I'm using Mac, so Python 3, maybe in Windows, you just type in Pi. And then, or not at all, just manage Pi sometimes. And then let's go ahead and run the server. Okay. So back in the browser then, let's go ahead and access our project. There we go. And then let's just go to the slash test and that should then simulate an error. So now we have an error. Let's go back into our dashboard here. Let's go to our projects and let's now see what's happened. So let's go into this project here and you can see that well, we have an error. So we have our first event. So I'm set up here so that it sends an email every time there's an event. And you can see this is an example of the email that is sent. And this is super handy, of course, because if there is an error in production, you want to know straight away so you can receive an error and then you can start to deal with the problem. So you can see that I'm still receiving the error in the terminal. So if I'm developing, I'm still receiving the errors. So that's useful. But let's have a look to see what's now been recorded in Sentry. So let's go into the error and you can see that there's a whole host of information here that can now be generated. Now in terms of workflow here, maybe we're working in a team so we can d invite different members to the team. And of course we can start to then uh, divide or delegate different problems to different members of the team, for example. Over here at the top, we've got some different options so we can define whether it's been resolved or not. We can ignore, we can mark reviewed, um, we can go ahead and maybe share. That can be fairly useful, sharing this type of information to try and get a resolve. But you can see the level of detail that's being recorded and captured here. Users IP, client OS, uh, down the bottom here, you'll find um, a whole host of different information which can be useful. Uh, in some cases, even, for example, all the packages that are currently being run in, in my application environment. So this can take a little bit of time to start to become familiar with the different sections and how and where to collect information, which is going to make it easier for you to resolve. Here, for example, it seems very simple. It's highlighted the issue uh, potentially that we're receiving. Sometimes if you flick over to the raw, you can see pretty much the same output as we're receiving in the terminal. So presuming everything's okay, let's just go ahead and resolve. So this is now resolved. So let's go back to our issues and you can now see that we have all issues resolved. Eventually you might make your way over to releases. So a release is a version of your code, so version one, version two, that maybe you've deployed to an environment. So we can go ahead and notify Sentry about a new release, and then Sentry can then start to monitor that new release and identify any new issues or any regressions that's happened through changing and um, iterating over code and creating a new version of that code. So that can be quite good information and help you track bugs and issues in your code. So there really are many different ways of tracking exceptions and errors in your code. And particularly once you've deployed your application, it's almost critical that you have something in place so that you can quickly respond to any errors in your application. So hopefully that's whet your appetite. Thank you very much for listening. Hopefully the information was useful and I didn't embellish too much. Thank you very much for listening again and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.